honor and respects. This is Salsista Brujo Luis. It is early in the morning. I'm up having my cafecito, getting ready for my clients of the day. Uh, everyone who knows me knows that yo soy un ama espiritista. I'm an espiritista. I am a brujo. I'm a salsista. 99% of what I do, people come to my house. And so I attend to clients. And a lot of what I do, I do is spiritual consultations. I do limpias, cleansings, eh, rompimientos. I do trabajos espirituales for my clients. Uh, you know, everything that an espiritista does, you know, and a, and a brujo and a sancista. What I'm going to show you this uh, for this video right here, just clips of trabajos espirituales that I do for clients. Uh, during a month. So I'm just going to show you little tidbits or little clips of what I just do because a lot of people think that I sit around and all day I'm reading, you know, cards, which is nothing wrong with that for those who do that as a, a living. I do do this 90% of the time, but a lot of uh, what I do is interacting with clients, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, removing negative vibrations. I don't work to harm. I, I work to protect. I work to heal, I work to elevate. So what you're gonna see is what I do uh, generally during a month. Uh, but before I start this video, I wanna dedicate this video, and let me have a, a little sipicito de mi cafecito, you know what I'm saying? Cafe con leche para la mañana. So before I start this video, I wanna do an introduction to a channel that I think you should all go check out one of my personal favorite youtube channels i like to i like to discover a new youtube channels or channels that i haven't seen and i like to you know tell my watchers go check this channel out it's really good you know that's the way latinos roll you know we like to see our community grow and develop the channel is titled eve the medium she is dominicana she's you know from my sister island next door to puerto rico she is Eve the Medium. I'm going to leave a link down below. The first video that I saw from hers, I'm going to leave it down below. Go, so, go check it out. Uh, and I'll probably do an introduction to this video for her. Uh, but she is a media unidad. She, she's an espiritista. I think she's media asentada in Santeria. I think she also practices Palo. I'm not sure. I have to go check out her videos again. Uh, she is also initiated into Haitian voodoo. But a lot of what she does is, I thought she, you know, I messaged her, I said, Tore Boricua, because some, you know, when we speak English, Latinos, we have the same kind of accent. We can't tell who's who until we speak Spanish. And so she emailed, she emailed me back and she's like, no, I thought she was Cuban or a Boricua, Puerto Rican. And she's like, no, I'm so Dominican. And I was like, well, wow, that's pretty cool. So anyways. Love her channel. Go check it out after you watch this video, of course. Uh, go check it out. Great channel. One of my recommendations. One of those videos that I tell people, go check this channel out. If you don't see that I'm posting a video for a while, go check this out. This is a really good channel. She works espiritualmente similar to how I work espiritualmente. So Eve, the medium, I'm dedicating this video or this introduction to you and to all my followers, go check her channel. It's a really great uh, channel. So again, I'm gonna get ready to start my day, drinking my coffee before my clients start rolling in. I don't know what I'm gonna title this video, probably the month in the life of a brujo. Not sure yet, uh, I always, end up titling a video when I'm finished editing and all that so I hope you like it if you do like my channel uh, or if you're new to this channel please subscribe if you like what you see please subscribe please hit that like button I really appreciate that like button please comment because I try to uh, answer all my comments and share on your favorite social media and with your friends, if you think your friends might enjoy this channel. So anyways, I'm gonna get this video going because I think this is gonna be a long one. So it's dedicated to Eve the Medium. Go check out her channel, it's a great channel. This is Sancista Brujo Luis, and I hope you enjoy my channel. Santo Sanse.
cold water. Clean this up. Get rid of that. I will show you. Clean cold water. Here I have some dried herbs. This is Artamisa. And this is Yelba Buena. But this is just collecting herbs to make baños, baths. Cold out. And I'm going to collect all this ruda. Because I need to save it. And I'm going to cut it. It's fall here in uh, New England. So I'm going to collect it all before it starts dying out and wasting. So I'm going to trim it all up and dry it up. Okay. Okay, so here's another ruda. And again, it's getting cold. So I'm going to trim this baby down. I'm going to trim it right around here so it can grow next year. Because you see it's starting to die because of the cold air. So I'm going to trim it down right around here and save it. So here is a barruda, and you can see I tied it up in a string or rope. I made a maso. A maso in English is known as a bushel. So what I got, what I do is I hang it by a window like this so it dries out. You see, it was already starting to dry out. Uh, a lot of people say, "Do I? Do you buy your jars?" Well, sometimes, but I buy them uh, real cheap. Okay, I don't pay a lot of money. Uh, this is Wormswood. Artamisa. Here's some uh, Ruda. Okay, a jar that I bought. I think I paid like a dollar. But I don't always uh, buy jars. Sometimes I save jars from spaghetti sauces or anything like that. This is a pasote. Uh, so I don't always go buy jars. If I have a jar that has a little sauce that I can use, of course I'm going to wash it and save it. I'm going to hang this uh, Ruda up backwards like this to dry and I have some nice uh, more a uh, ruda okay last year was bigger this year I didn't get so much but last year I got a lot of ruda so here is uh, my ruda I'm sure you guys are bored of watching me hanging my herbs but this is how I dry my herbs and this is my ruda, and I have it hanging by an eastern windowsill. I hang, see, I got nails up on my walls because I hang herbs on my windowsill and on the corner over here. But here's the, uh, la ruda, and this will be probably the last time you see me hanging an herb. Not that I don't do it, because I'll do it every year, but I've done so many videos where I show that I hang and dry my herbs this way. So I'm just going to let this baby get dried and use it for baños and despojos, for herbal baths. So here's La Ruda, and it's nice and dried. And I'm going to take, uh, took like a week to dry. I'm going to take the scissor, and I'm going to trim it up, and I place it into my jar. This is the Ruda that I've been collecting this year. So what I do is I trim it up. I use the roots, the stems, and I also use the leaf. And this is going into this jar. Here are all the, the parts of the flower, which I just close my hand and push down and it all falls down into the pot, into the plate. So I just hold it this way, clasp my fingers and pull down like so and all the plants fall off. Now with the scissor, I'm just gonna chop it up, the rest of it. Here it is, nice and chopped. I use this for baths and the thicker parts I use for resguardos or for other items that I may need for my clients. So now I'm just going to place it into my jar. 
so that wax is melted. Turn it off. And with this, I pick it up because I don't want to burn myself. It's very hot. And then I just fasten the candle in there and hold it for a little bit so it stays nice and tight. Sometimes the candlestick holders are a little too um too big. So I'm gonna let that cool down. Okay, now it's a little cooler. Let me try the candle again. See what happens is when it's too hot, it's gonna melt. We got another candle. You wanna make sure that this is cool. Yeah, it's cool. You want to fasten your candle in there and blow on it so it sticks. Okay, here's the candle. That's one way of doing it. You got to make sure this is cool, okay? And you got to make sure that the wax is cooling down. This is just for me when the candles are, so the candle holder is too, too big. And so what happens is they wobble. I don't want them to wobble. I want them to stand up straight. You can do that, or let me show you another method, which takes a little longer than this one. Make sure I, as it's cooling down, I want to enderezarlo, straighten it up a little bit more. Okay. So far, this is cool. The wax is cooling. Uh, try not to put it when this is hot, because your your candle will melt. I just want it to stick and make sure you can handle it and uh, the candles they're nice and tight the reason I'm doing this is because these candles tend not to you know stand up erect on the candles to cold it. these are these candles are too small so now I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna get this one. Oh no, that's the shadow of the red candle. Yeah. So now I'm gonna do a blue candle. I'm gonna show you a different way that I can do that. And this is gonna go into the altar for my trabajo espiritual. And it's nice and it's not hot. I can hold it, make sure it's not hot. And it's somewhat erect. Another method of doing it is to take a small candle. I buy these at the Asian stores. And to just let it drip. This takes way longer than the other process, but it does the same thing. You want that wax inside of that. Uh, and this takes much longer than the other way. And then, see that? So you want that wax all in there. This takes a little bit longer of a process. But what I want is my candles to stand up erect. Now that I got some wax in there, okay, now I'm going to fasten my candle carefully and it will stand erect for you. And that's what I want. I want to let it cool down before I move it because I want it to be erect for my trabajo. Because I don't want my candles flopping over. So both candles, so both candles are prepared. And they're nice and sturdy. This is the one that I uh, heated up the candlestick. Um, remember, this is very hot, so you got to make sure that it's cooled down before you place uh, the, the candle inside because the candle will start melting with the wick. Or I use the drip method. I gotta fix this one a little bit more. Now, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just use tapper candles? Well, in my spiritual work, I can use tapper candles and I can use glass candles, but mostly I just use these types of candles for my, uh, my works, my trabajo espiritual. Let's see, I got red, pinks, I got all colors in here. This is the ones that I use the most. They show out a white. Use a lot of white candles in my spiritual work. But you can use tapper candles. This is just the way that I'm doing it. And this is just for a client for una limpieza. And I'm using red and blue because of a court case issue. Uh, but 
that's up against, you know, for the person. Again, you can use tapper candles. I just generally like to use, actually, do any of these have the, the Jewish candles, you know, I just like to use these uh, better, you know, when it comes to my work. And they usually last three hours. Now they're ready to go to the altar. Oil them down a little, add a little oil, and they're ready to go. Okay, so here here is uh, the candles. They're enderezado. This one's a little bit tilted. I can fi still fix that. I have the lawyer's candles and the court papers here. This is a court problem for an, a client. I'm just going to add a few drops of oil onto my candles. Just a few blessed drops of oil. And the red one. Okay, now I'm going to do the blue one. Okay, here's the blue one. And just add a few drops of the oil, holy oil. Let's go down the candle, just to prepararlo for the clients. And this will be for a work for a client. And you can see it's got the oils. And then I just work it into the candles for the clients. Right here you see a uh, protective reguardos that I'm doing for some clients. Okay, they're just being uh, blessed and consecrated. Okay. These were done uh, by my partner, Terry, who is a shaman. Here's the candle. And they just came uh, bl bl blessed and consecrated. So this is just another trabajo espiritual that I'm doing for a client.
This is the 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 eve of uh, Tuesday or Martes, which is the day of Mars. I'm doing this at trabajo espiritual for a client, for two clients, for a court case. And I am using the candle for El Justo Juez, as you can see here. Here's my prayer book with a photo of El Justo Juez and my prayer to El Justo Juez. I'm also using La Oración de los Tres Clavos. And this is where you see that I'm using Los Tres Clavos. I have two binded and one in the bottom there. And I will continue doing this novena until uh, the court case for my clients. Because they are facing a court, you know, they're going through a court issue. And I will also be doing this for the novena for seven days or nine days. And I will also be reciting a Psalms from my book of Psalms which is right here and I will be using a Psalm 4 I've got candles holding the Psalms that I need to recite I will be reciting Psalm 11 Psalm 21 Psalm 26 Psalm 35, I will place a lot of emphasis on Psalm 35. And Psalm, I think it's 61. And I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one that I'm going to be using. But I will definitely be using mostly Psalm 35. So here, I have... Uh, iron spikes binded an iron spike there uh, court papers lawyer cards you cannot see the name of my clients behind and I will be using uh, like I said El Justo Juez which is surrounded by La Siete Potencia right there This is El Justo Juez. And also, La Oración de los uh, Tres Clavos. Los Tres Clavos y la Cruz vayan delante de mí. Jesucristo murió en ella. Respondan y habla, hablen por mí. Y ablanden los corazones de los que sufren en contra de Mia, amen. So I will be doing this for the novena for my client. And this is all preparado. Santo Dios, Santo Fuerte, Santo Inmortal, ten misericordia por nosotros y el mundo entero que los tres clavos de la cruz vayan delante de mí, que le hablen y respondan por mí, y hablan de los corazones de los que sufren en contra mía. Me persigno con los tres clavos y me abrazo a la cruz. Cruz santa, cruz digna, cruz divina, yo te alabo y te bendigo por el Señor que murió en ti. No dejes llegar cosas malas hacia mí. Que la cruz y la corona vaya siempre delante de mí y muevan los corazones de los que estén en contra de mí. Cristo vive, Cristo reina, Cristo de todos mis enemigos me defienda. El Padre me libere, el Hijo me guarde, y el Espíritu Santo por nosotros hable. Ave María Purísima, sin pecado concebida. Alabado sea el Santísimo Sacramento del Altar. So, as you can see, I have been taking care of this 
eh, trabajo, es, uh, trabajo espiritual eh, for my client eh, for the seven, seven days or so. And uh, it's at its final, uh, final stages. And uh, you can see I probably made a mess of the altar. But that's what Blue Hedy is all about. You know, when you do spells for clients. So I will uh, finish this trabajo. And thankfully, uh, from what I've heard, uh, so far half of, of the job has worked very well for the client. And I'm going to do some more spiritual work for them. That court case, it went pretty well for them. And uh, so I'm just going to finish it up with probably some more workings. But uh, this is it. You can see that I've been taking care of it. You can't see this candle because it's in the water, and the water's gone down a lot since then. Now I'm going to wait till the candles completely go down and get rid of everything by either a cemetery or a tree that has been struck by lightning, and I will leave an offering, a derecho the spirits for payment as a thank you for their help in this uh, spiritual working this magical spiritual working <laughs> I just want to show you the inside of the candles and show you that it is almost down to the ending of el trabajo espiritual, my spiritual working. So here I am by a river, by my house. And I don't like to waste anything. It's a uh, full moon night, November night. And I throw those into the water. I don't like to waste anything. So I'm also going to offer the pumpkins. I'm gonna offer the pumpkins into the river. And lastly, some coins to the river spirits on this night of the full moon. I don't like to waste anything, so I bring it back into nature. I bring abundance and blessings. Right here, uh, this is known as El Sauce in Spanish. You can see the full moon. We call this El Sauce or the willow tree.
here's another uh, salsa or willow tree. Willow is good for binding, uh, for divination, for protection. You can use these uh, to bind things. It's known as el sauce or the willow. El sauce is also used for a binding pack. This one's pretty high. I can hardly reach it there. On this night of a November full moon, it's good for binding and for making packs and for divination and for protection. The willow tree. El salsa is also good for uh, making packs and of course I said binding. It's uh, sacred to a lot of death spirits and moon goddesses of uh, ancient Europe. And it's always planted by water, running water or river. So I just wanted to show you the willow tree uh, during the day and I'm going to go under it and here are the branches that it hangs from. This one, this willow tree looks like it's 80 feet tall and you can see how thick it is. Look at that. 80 feet tall, looks like 80 feet tall and on the ground over here you can see there's a bunch of branches just hanging around and I can gather this for spiritual work instead of uh, taking it from the tree itself and I leave a derecho so I'm just going to show you again the branches it's fall here so it's not as green and that's a big big tree beautiful beautiful willow tree which reminds me of how you can I'm going to do in a future video how you can tell if a tree, well all trees have spirit, but if a tree has a santo or a muerto. But in a future video I might do if a tree has a santo or a muerto on it. All trees have sacred spirits. I just want to take this time, I just want to take this time for my busy day to say thank you to Maria Lourdes. Uh, she gave me this package and I never got a chance to say thank you. So I'm going through it and uh, this is what she gave to me. And mommy, I'm sorry. I just want to show you that I have the package. And this is, uh, I think it's a candy. I'm thinking this is candy. And she said I'm supposed to share with Terry. Yeah. Good luck on that one. What else did she give me? Uh, bottle pourers. Cool. What else? Mama, you're going to have to uh, tell me what these are because I have no idea what they are. All right, so I'm just taking a little break. Look at that. Gracias, mamita. This is like sofrito. Please, mommy, comment down below what it is because I'll put this in my arroz con gandule. <laughs> and I think, oh, no. It's pique, Puerto Rican pique. Homemade Puerto Rican pique. Very hot, very spicy. This is good for lo que de. Para los días, para los muertos, lo que de. They like all that pique. And it's nice and fresh. So thank you, and one more thing here, so, and she gave me a nice little wand, and Maria Lourdes is a follower of mine on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much, mommy, I really appreciate it. The speaker is going to go good con este, El Barón del Cementerio y Papa Candelo y todos esos misterios que le gustan en el pique that they love the, the hot sauces. This is speaker from Puerto Rico, hecho en casa. Thank you, sweetheart, I appreciate it. Please let me know what this is because I don't want to make sure I don't make rice and beans with this. Parece a, a sofrito. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart, I appreciate it. Okay, so here you see my healing 
anointing oil and I messed up the screw. So I'm going to use one of these that Maria Lourdes sent me and see if it works. Took it already. And you see I have to pull it out with my teeth because I stuck in there. Let me try that. Put one on, see if it works. Here's the old cork. And guess what, Maria? It works perfectly. Thank you. I'm going to make un muñeco de trapo. This is un muñeco de trapo. Uh, I had a client who has a daughter, teenage daughter, who is in a relationship that is going downhill, very negative and violent a relationship. So uh, parents, we want to protect and, and, and watch over our children and separate, you know, protect our children and separate our children from those things that may harm them. So I quite understood. So I asked the mother, you know, bring me anything that she could from this gentleman that she wants to separate from her daughter. And luckily she got these pañuelos that this person wore. And here I'll show you what one of the el muñeco de voodoo looks like, which I'm going to make. Okay. El muñeco de voodoo or el muñeco de trapo, el muñeco de bandana. El muñeco de voodoo has nothing to do with the Voodoo religion of Haiti is this is just what we call it. Anyway, so I made that. I uh, painted some red and black pins. I'm gonna use that. I've got pictures. She brought me pictures from the person that she wants to separate, and the name's right there. And I'm gonna keep that private. She brought me pictures, and she brought me dirt uh, from where this gentleman lives. And I'm gonna use other ingredients, but I'm gonna make a muñeco de trapo to get this uh, person out of her daughter's life. And el muñeco de trapo um, will look like this, or somewhat like this. What I like about the bandanas or los pañuelos that she brought me, one is just a typical red bandana that we find, but I like this bandana, it's pretty interesting. Because if you can see, it has uh, clubs, spades, uh, diamonds, but instead of hearts, we have skulls. These represent the four suits of La Baraja, uh, the Spanish cards. Uh, so there's no heart here. There's a, there's a skull. Okay. And we all know what spades represent and, you know, and clubs represent. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. And this is going to work very well on this muñeco. Spiritual. Remember, this is sympathetic, magia simpatica, sympathetic magic, something that we use to represent something else. And I just thought that was pretty interesting. So I flipped the bandanas around. You can see I have them flipped around. I have the red now and the black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align them carefully. And then I'm just going to start rolling one side of la bandana, like so, nice and tight. I'm going to do this halfway. It's something that we learned as kids. So I'm just going to do that halfway. Make sure it's there. And now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And hopefully, all right, so now I have so now I have it looks like two scrolls, okay, so now I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to bring this side over and somewhat separate it. Then I'm going to have to work with it a little bit. But I'm going to start pulling the arms. So it kind of looks like this. And now I'm going to bring this over and do the same thing over here. 
and do this. And now I like the colors red and black because red and black represents the colors of the spirits of the crossroads. So let's see what it looks like. I'm give me a little chunky muñeco de voodoo. that and what I'm gonna do is tie it and then I'm just gonna work with it to make a shape and let me show you after I finish I'm gonna work with it to get this doll in shape here is what it looks like so far okay this is the so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tie these two up and work that into un muñequito. So now what I'm doing is I'm aligning el muñeco. Make sure it looks like a, a voodoo doll. Okay. And if I did it correctly, I will have two pouches. One in the head, which I could put ingredients in. See, I'm putting my fingers in there. There's one in the head. And which becomes like a pouch. And then I have one in the stomach region, which is right here. I'm holding it inside, my fingers inside there. So I can use that. This is a double one. They usually come off. You saw the first one that I made. It's thinner. Um, but this is a big dude. So we want to, to represent this dude as much as possible. I got my pins ready. I've got my ready. I got my arrasa con todo herbs ready, my vencedor, my sal negra, me, my hot food powder, and the photos of the individual. This is all going into this muñequito. This will do. This is not to harm the person. I don't do anything to harm. I want this guy out of the picture. She wants to protect her daughter. So we want that. And the colors represent uh, the spirits of the crossroads. Uh, in Santeria Legua, in Voodoo Papaleba, Mercurio, but spirits of the crossroad. And here is El Muñeco, the Trapo, El Muñeco de Voodoo. The head, vamos a dominar los cinco sentidos, las cabezas, las manos, los pies, el corazón, everything. We want to dominate all that and get this guy out of the picture that's very dangerous for my clients daughter the relationship is a very dangerous relationship so i'm going to get this done for my client okay so whenever i do spiritual work for clients i like to send them pictures i like to show them proof that i'm doing the work that i'm doing this is the way i like to do it if i contract somebody whether it's a plumber or anybody I want to see the work that's being done doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to see everything they're doing but I want to get some proof so when I do spiritual work for clients I do send the people pictures of what I'm doing and my progress here's a muñequito okay for the client now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it powders and this is the picture of the person I don't want to show you but I wrote the name in Theban script and I crossed it and I have a other papers that I've been you know because I've been doing this trabajo for a couple of days for this client okay and of course I do take pictures and I send them this is gonna all be mixed in with powders that I'm going to place within El Muñeco Okay, it's, this is all going to go within El Muñeco. For the client's daughter, I prepare, I'm preparing Un Recuerdo as well, and I'm doing un, uh, the Seder Square, El Padre Nuestro, you know, in Latin. This is something just to protect her, to give her strength uh, during this breakup. So now I'm going to burn all these pieces of paper, and I'm going to mix them in with all my powders, and they're going to go inside El muñequito, el, el muñequito de trapo. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to burn the picture of this individual. Did you see that? I'm going to burn this and I want the ashes for el trabajo, for my work, for my client. 
This is already the ashes and it's going to go inside el muñequito with powders that I used and mixed with it. Cristo reina, Cristo vence, Cristo de todos mis enemigos me defiende. Con uno yo te veo. Con dos yo te ato. Y con tres el corazón yo te parto. Mi voz te vence, y mis ojos te enciega, y mi voluntad te domina. Paz, paz, Cristo, Cristo, dómonos nuestro. Paz, paz, Cristo, Cristo, dómonos nuestro. Paz, paz, Cristo, Cristo, dómonos nuestro. So I'm by the river by my house and you can see the water is calmer this side and it gets uh, crazier as it goes further down the Merrimack River. This Merrimack River deposits itself into uh, the North Atlantic Ocean and it passes by my client's house and the person she wants away from her daughter. It's a cold day on a Tuesday. I think it's 30 degrees outside. The water is freezing. This is sympathetic magic. We want his, we want him away. We want a corriente del agua to take him away. And we want his heart to cold him up and to just walk away from the situation. So I'm bringing this trabajo to the river uh, where I'm going to deposit it. First thing is first is I'm going to pay a derecho to Cachita, the earth, the river spirit. La calle del cobre. It, you know, to help me, giving her thanks for helping me with this trabajo espiritual. After my prayers, I, uh, first of all, I'm going to give her flowers, but actually, no, I'm just going to give her a payment. Uh, after my prayers, thanking her for helping me, and I'm going to just throw that into the river. I cross myself with the flowers, las flores, that were on her altar. Kiss it. Pass it by my head, asking her to remove y pa fuera. It's going away. I want this away from uh, my client. And lastly, el muñeco. Okay. Again, the Merrimack River goes all the way into the North Atlantic. The water's around 30 degrees. It's very cold outside. It's a Tuesday, day of Mars. Okay. So I have him binded, not to hurt him. Not to hurt him in any way, but to separate him to the currents of the water, the cold in his heart, and to remove him. So I'm going to pass this and I'm going to throw this into the river. And here's a muñeco de trapo. So here's a muñeco de trapo. Y para el río que se vaya lejos, que se vaya en su camino. And it goes into the Atlantic River. Anyways, this is Sancista Brujo Luis. I'm going to end this video. If you like this uh, channel, if you like this video, eh, and if, you, and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, please hit that, bell like, uh, that like button, and please share on your favorite social media. This is Sancista Brujo Luis, Santo Sanse. Que se vaya con los corrientes del río en este día de martes. I'm on my way back home from El Rio. I'm very cold. New England day. I don't want to 
don't fall, so I should be paying attention. So I'm in a park, I tripped, okay, and I noticed that my pants were wet. As I was doing this trabajo, let me check this out. Uh oh, see the blood? I hit myself. So I gotta go home and clean that. What I do for my clientes. <laughs>